Hey, what's going on? So I wanted to make this video showing some of my VHS movies. Now, if you watched me before, you might have seen my horror DVD collection. And if you watch that, you know I say in that video, I'm, I'm not claiming to have like the biggest collection of stuff ever. A lot of stuff I sell off because it's either worth too much money and I don't really plan on watching it. Or in this case, I have the DVD, so I don't really need the VHS anymore. But these are ones that I've held on to over the years. And hopefully I can point out some hidden gems for you as well as not only show you what I have. And just a little helpful tip here. If you ever go to a barbecue, make sure to bring hamburger, hot dog, and beer. I also want to point out that 90% of these were found in the wild for very cheap for a dollar or less. And sometimes I would buy like big bins for like 10 bucks and get like 40 movies. So these didn't cost me very much at all. A few I bought like uh, retail brand new like 20 years ago. And uh, when that's the case, I'll let you know about that. But yeah, so like this one right here, Kiss Daddy Goodbye in the clamshell. That's pretty cool. I lived in New York for a couple years and I wouldn't find many VHS out there, but I did find this one in uh, downtown Brooklyn and I uh, was very happy at a Salvation Army. There you go. Uh, pretty cool right there. We got a big box Wrestlemania. Heck yeah. This one Warriors of the Apocalypse. I love these uh, cheesy uh, sci-fi movies. That's great. This one Dinosaur Island. Uh, this movie is insane. So obviously very cheesy, but it is great. I'm surprised it's rated R. This is almost like soft core. This is uh, uh, like a movie you'd see on Cinemax, but uh, good time right here on this one. Love me some Dinosaur Island. Here's some wrestling VHS. I sold off a bunch of these, but I still do have a pretty decent collection of wrestling DVDs. A good portion of these are horror and low budget sci-fi movies. When it comes to VHS, that's what I'm into. Got the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies here. This is the first one uh, media uh, release. I did have the wizard video release, but I sold it because I didn't need to have two copies of it and I'm happy with this one. So that's fine. Uh, part two, there you go. That one's pretty good. It starts out strong, I feel, and then kind of uh, loses it towards the end. This one is, you know, pretty good. Not as good as the first one, obviously. I actually think that this one is kind of overrated. Some people seem to think this is a hidden gem. I think it's kind of just boring. I'm not a big fan of this one and people hate this one and I think this one is underrated. Like sure it's a hot mess but it's interesting at least. Uh, so yeah if you've never seen this one I do kind of recommend it. Maybe you'll enjoy yourself. Renee Zellweger and Matthew McConaughey are in this which is kind of funny. Here we got Spookies, which is a slightly lesser known horror movie. It's crazy. Sometimes it's nonsensical, but it is pretty good. I do recommend watching this one. I found that one for 50 cents at the thrift store, and it was the only horror movie they had. And I'm thinking that someone donated a bunch of horror movies and someone came and grabbed them all and just overlooked this one. Because who only has one horror tape and then they donate that one? So I'm guessing that's what happened. I got lucky that someone left this one behind. Fright Night classic. Phantasm 2. For a while, this wasn't on DVD, uh, so you could only watch it on VHS, and this is a really awesome movie. Here we have Dead Alive, and I actually bought this one brand new. It's the most I ever spent on a tape, and it was $17 at the time, uh, like over 20 years ago, and what happened was I had rented this movie and loved it, and then I found it at the local uh, VHS shop uh, called Music Magic, which you might have heard me talk about before. And at the time, their tapes were like $5.99. So yeah, I bought this to show my friends. And uh, we sat down, and there was like no gore in this. This is like the goriest movie ever. And the one I bought had no gore. It turns out it was the R-rated uh, cut. And I was very upset. I was almost embarrassed. I wasted everyone's time. So I ran out to Strawberries and bought it for the $17. And $17 well spent because this movie rules. This movie's really good too, Crawl Space with Klaus Kinski. And apparently he's like a crazy guy in real life and scared everyone on the set. So like, they're not really acting when they're afraid of this guy. In Crawl Space, that's a good one. Slumber Party Massacre 2. Wish I also had the first one, uh, but this one's pretty good too. Future Kill. Good, cheesy, low-budget sci-fi. A History of Violence. Now, this one is funny because it's the last VHS ever put out by a major studio. But this is a screener copy. And as you can see, they're not for sale or rental. And this video store didn't care about that little warning because they were renting it out. It doesn't matter. I'm showing this. They've been closed for a very long time. But it's funny that uh, they're renting out the screener copy. I doubt anyone checked it out. 
I just feel that at that point in time, people didn't really care that much about VHS. So this might not have ever been rented. The Hitcher 1 and 2, those are good. Mr. Frost, this is slightly underrated, I feel. Jeff Goldblum is the devil. He's not like super evil. He's kind of just like tempts people. Uh, and it's a good flick. Dungeon Master, that's uh, great cheesy fun right there. I love that. Evil Dead 2, awesome classic. I might have bought this one brand new back in the day for like 10 bucks. Uh, I kind of forget where I got it. But yeah, classic movie right there. Humanoids from the Deep. Oh my god, this movie is insane. This is great. Highly recommend this one. The box doesn't really show very much. Night School, to be honest, that's kind of a slow slasher movie. I'm not that into this movie. Some people do really like it, though. Prince of Darkness, uh, that's pretty good. The Unnameable, that's good, too. Body Bags, this was okay. I've only seen this uh, once, and uh, I thought it was all right. I feel this one's underrated. Playroom with the guy who plays Shooter McGavin and Happy Gilmore. And, yeah, uh, Shooter turns into, like, this weird creature. It's very creepy. Playroom is pretty good. Sometimes they come back. This is decent. I had the sequel. I'm not sure where it is, but here's the first one. An American Werewolf in London classic. Don't really remember this one. This is an awesome Charles Bronson, like, almost like a slasher movie. Uh, this guy, like, is a maniac uh, killing ladies, and Charles Bronson saves the day. Great flick right here. Don't Go in the House. This is kind of like a ripoff of Psycho, but it's still good. Uh... This guy has, like, mommy issues. Definitely recommend. Don't go in the house. Connoisseur. Cheesy dinosaur fun right there. A boy and his dog. This is a good uh, post-apocalyptic movie. Definitely recommend that. Written by Harlan Ellison. If you know who that is. Uh, he did some crazy stuff. Here's Screamers. I don't remember too much about this. It's been a very long time since I watched it. I do have another movie named Screamers. Uh, this is a different movie named Screamers. There you go. Oh, yeah. Creepazoids. Fantastic. Immortal Combat! Now, people think Roddy Piper was just in, like, They Live and Hell Comes to Frog Town, but he did, like, a few just low-budget, kind of crappy uh, action movies. So, yeah. Immortal Combat with Roddy Piper. The Stuff. Oh, my God. What a classic movie this is right here. I watched this when I was younger, maybe like 11 or 12, and it was just scary enough and like cool, and I really dug it. I didn't have cable. I watched it on UHF TV, and yeah, so this one stuck with me. It's just neat how like there's things you watch when you're younger, and uh, you just are always fond of them. I should also admit that I didn't watch much horror like as a young kid. It wasn't until I was a teenager that like I really got into it. I was like deathly afraid of it. I was a big wuss. Uh, so yeah, now I'm making up for it. I own these horror tapes. I ain't scared. There's this one, 1990, The Bronx Warriors. Now this one is interesting because uh, I get it confused with another movie or maybe it's the same movie with an alternate title called Escape from the Bronx. Uh, but yeah, I remember this one uh, being pretty good. 1990, The Bronx Warriors. Uh, Vic Morrow is in there. That's kind of funny. I'm a fan of Chud. This is a pretty clean copy. It's a full flap. Pretty nice. Yeah. And I actually hate this movie, Chud 2. Now, again, when I was a teenager, uh, I watched Chud and I liked it. So I rented Chud 2 to show my friends and I thought it was horrible. It's just like a lame comedy. And it's not even like chuds. Now they're just zombies, but not like cool zombies. And yeah, I don't recommend Chud 2. What's funny about Chud 2, though, it does have that guy, what's his name, uh, Robert Vaughn, who is in the D'Olivera and Morgan uh, lawyer commercials. I was uh, found that funny. Maybe if you're not from New England, you've never heard of that law firm. But he, pr I think that he does commercials for other lawyers as well. Or at least he did, you know, in the late 90s. So yeah, Chud 2. There's this one, School Spirit. And wow, you can't make movies like this anymore. There's a ghost, and look, he's trying to take away the woman's towel. She wants the towel. She wants to cover herself up. The ghost is like, nope. Not going to let that happen. This is like the fifth or sixth best movie about a perverted ghost. So if you like movies about perverted ghosts, then this is right up your alley. I actually remember it, it's boring and dumb, uh, but the cover is something else. Hello, Mary Lou Prom Night 2. Now, this movie is better than the first Prom Night, as far as I'm concerned. This is more like, you know, like paranormal uh, type stuff happening. 
the first one is just like a slasher movie. Uh, but yeah, this is really good. I recommend Hello, Mary Lou, Prom Night 2. Buried Alive, uh, this is kind of an underrated movie, I feel, also. Jennifer Jason Lee buries her husband alive. Does he escape and seek revenge? You'll have to watch yourself and find out critters this is another one i watched when i was little i was like kind of afraid of it but it's not that scary it's basically like uh gremlins maybe a little bit more hardcore than gremlins uh but yeah critters is awesome invasion of the body snatchers american cyborg steel warrior this movie is awesome this is basically like if you combined uh cyborg and the terminator but i think it's better than cyborg uh definitely recommend you check down this movie right here it's great Dollman vs. Demonic Toys. That's okay. I haven't watched this one. Christine Classic. Uh, you know, this one is what it is. I'm, a, I'm pretty sure it's a student film. Stephen King would help out student filmmakers by letting them adapt his work. And the conditions, I think, were uh, it can't already be like something that's a movie. And they have to pay him $1. And I'm pretty sure that's the case with this. They also weren't allowed to profit off of this. But I'm pretty sure Stephen King liked it so much that he let him put it out. Or they collabed on that. I didn't really like this that much. I thought it was kind of boring. But... Yeah, interesting. This guy, he directed, like, uh, The Fog and Shushank Redemption. Yeah. Freddy Krueger, this guy's wicked scary. Tales from the Dark Side, Dead Ringers. Not my favorite Cronenberg movie, but people do really like that. Pet Cemetery 1 and 2, great movies. Monkey Shines, a little too long, to be honest. I feel that's the case with a lot of George Romero stuff. He has that one, Night Riders, about people who ride motorcycles and they joust each other at medieval fairs, and it's two and a half hours. Why is it so long? Gator bait. I definitely used to stare at this cover as a little kid at the video store. And it's a pretty good movie. Good exploitation movie. This is pretty good, I remember. Kronos, uh, Gumaro Del Toro's first movie. This is halfway decent. This is good, actually. Uh, Cyborg. It's okay. I, I kind of feel that this is a little boring at parts. Uh, but yeah, obviously, uh, people do really like it. Not my favorite Van Damme movie. Strike Commando. This is very cheesy. There's a very cheesy scene uh, where there's like a he's holding a dying little kid and he's telling them how they're going to go to Disneyland. Uh, you should look it up on YouTube because it's so ridiculous. This movie right here, Stranded, is so underrated. I think it's so good. Aliens come down and, you know, uh, become friends with this family and they kind of have a standoff with the police and it's really good. I'm surprised more people don't talk about this. Highly recommend Stranded. River's Edge, that's classic. Got the She, that's a pretty good, uh, you know, sci-fi, low-budget movie. Now, this movie right here, See No Evil, is a ripoff of this movie right here, Wait Until Dark. They're, like, basically the same thing. Uh, but both of these are, are worth watching. Conan. Sleepwalkers. This movie has a really good soundtrack, and it's halfway decent of a movie. I recommend that. This is probably the second best Chuck Norris movie, Missing in Action. Action Jackson probably has the best one-liner in any action movie ever. Carl Weathers is taken prisoner. He's being like tortured by a guy and the guy's like, ooh, it's a shame you're not going to be able to make it to our barbecue. And then later, Carl Weathers, he gets out and he gets a bazooka and he finds the guy and, and he goes, oh, so about that barbecue, how do you like your ribs? And shoots him in the chest with a rocket. <laughs> I don't remember too much about these two movies right here. I don't remember too much about Fortress either, but I remember liking it. I Come in Peace. Uh, this is maybe the best, uh, you know, starring Dolph Lundgren role that he has. And uh, this one is really good too, Army of One. Definitely recommend both of these if you like action movies. The Skateboard Kid. I wanted to like this a lot because of how just stupid it is. Uh, but it gets really boring. But yeah, it is dumb. Dom DeLuise plays a talking skateboard. Well, I mean, he's a, he doesn't play the skateboard. He just voices it. But yeah, this isn't as good as I was hoping it would be. But this movie right here is fantastic. Oh my God, I love this movie so much. They would play this on cable a lot. I didn't have cable, but I slept over a friend's house and we watched this early in the morning at a sleepover. And we were like super amped after watching the big downhill race at the end. Uh, we wanted to like do that too, but we didn't have rollerblades. We had like old Nash skateboards. So yeah, we were riding down the hill on like skateboards inspired by this movie. The ending of this movie, the downhill race, it's just ripped off from the movie Thrashin', which they ripped off from the movie uh, Skateboard, the movie. So it's not very original, but 
fantastic flick right there. And I'm pretty sure this isn't on DVD, or at least not in the United States. I could be wrong. This movie, The Hidden, is absolutely fantastic. I feel the cover doesn't really show you how great it is, but you definitely need to track this one down. It's about an alien who comes to Earth, and he likes heavy metal music, and he likes driving like uh, Ferraris and Porsches and stuff, and he goes around like robbing and killing people. And Kyle MacLachlan here, uh, he has to stop him. Uh, and yes, highly, highly recommend this movie. Got more over here. Fun times. Oh, yeah. This movie is also very underrated. Not that this is underrated. I feel that this is rated right, but I feel most people probably don't know this movie exists, The Navigator. This is about people from medieval times. They come to modern time. It's like a serious take on what it would be like if people from uh, medieval times came to current times, uh, and it's really good. No Retreat, No Surrender, a very early John claude Van Damme role. He's not really in the movie very much. It's just kind of an action movie, and, you know, it's fun for what it is. I like these movies, uh, The Substitute uh, 1 and 2. Yep. Yeah. Fraternity, Vacation. I want to love movies like this. Usually they're very bad but entertaining anyways. And, uh, yeah, that's where this one falls. And Tim Robbins is in this. I'm sure he's, like, not proud of that. But, you know, there it is deliverance classic and not as popular southern comfort this is also very very good love this movie right here and this one is so underrated most people probably never heard of this movie but it is great shy people you got a young martha plumpton you have donald swayze patrick swayze's brother and he's kind of just like looks like patrick swayze but just a little bit off he's like the bizarro world uh patrick swayze and this movie is fantastic highly recommend this one uh, they're like Bayou people and like, you know, Martha Plumpton and her family are from the city and they come visit and bad things happen. Here's the other Screamers I was talking about. Uh, I probably enjoyed this version of Screamers more. This is a sci-fi and that other one is a horror one. And yeah, this is pretty good. Rolling Thunder. I checked this down because uh, Tarantino always, uh, you know, says how awesome it is. And it is a good movie. I don't think I like it quite as much as he does, but it's definitely worth watching. Rolling Thunder. Good flick. The Gladiator. This is a Abel Ferreira movie that he made for television. And even though it's made for television, it's still good. No Hold Bars. Uh, classic right there. Uh, very cheesy, but good time. I love uh, Hulk Hogan movies. They're so bad. They're good. And uh, this is so bad, it's good. Also, Kiss meets the Phantom of the Park. I love, like, 70s, and I love all eras of amusement parks. So, uh, yeah, this takes place in an amusement park. Very good time. Mr. Majestic, this is an underrated action movie. Uh, one of Charles Bronson's best, highly recommended. Under Siege 2, this is uh, surprisingly better than you think it would be, and recommend that one. Thief, this is Michael Mann's first movie, and a good time. Tangerine Dream does the soundtrack, and it's really good. This movie is hilarious, Waiting for Guffman. I think this movie is kind of underrated. It's Pat. Obviously, you couldn't get away with this movie nowadays, but, like, do you really want to make this movie nowadays? Uh, what really pushes this over the edge is Charles Rocket's performance. He's obsessed with Pat, and it is a thing of beauty. Uh, his performance is so funny in this uh the movie is like kind of cringy obviously but uh yeah so if you enjoy that type of thing like i do you should watch it's pat i also think this movie is very underrated this movie you should track down the blood of heroes it's a crazy like it's post-apocalyptic but it's not really like an action movie it's a post-apocalyptic sports movie about a made-up sport that's kind of like american gladiators meets like football and it involves like a cow's skull as the ball uh it's very strange but it's good and so it's a sport these guys are the defenders i think they're swinging chains at each other i highly recommend tracking this one down nowhere to run this is uh, another good kind of obscure action movie just like well made and stuff uh this woman uh you know has to defend herself recommend that one another hulk hogan movie thunder in paradise so this was a show, and I think this is just the pilot, and uh, they made a movie of the pilot. Kickboxer, kind of like just not quite as good as Bloodsport, but still awesome. In Summer School, that's a classic.
The stepfather, Terry O'Quinn, plays a crazy guy. Terry O'Quinn was uh, John Locke from Lost. Uh, and his performance is very good. I highly recommend this movie. The Jerky Boys, the movie. This is bad. Uh, but if you like bad movies, you might get a kick out of this like I did. Escape from New York. Uh, very clean copy there. Yeah. Needful Things. No escape. Troma's War. Uh, this is one of the better trauma movies. More of a action movie. Usually they make just like straight horror ones. Not straight horror, but like horror comedies. And this is more just an action movie. Uh, and that's pretty good. This is good too. Wolf is good. The Fun House. Really good. Yeah. American Gothic. Slightly underrated horror movie right there. This is a good Joe Dante movie. Matinee. Here we have some James Belushi movies. James Belushi kind of comes across as like a sleazeball, but uh, he is good in these types of roles. Uh, this one is kind of underrated, The Principal. I don't hear many people talk about this movie, Stunts. That's a good time. The original, Gone in 60 Seconds. This is amazing. The plot is very bad, but once you get over that, it's like an hour-long car chase. It's must-see cinema right there, gone in 60 seconds. Heck yeah. I don't think I ever watched this one. The Ripper, I heard it's not very good. So this one, Orgasmo, I bought this one brand new at Best Buy way back in the early 2000s. Uh, you know, probably was like $11 or so. I used to love going to Best Buy and I had a DVD player, but like a lot of times I would buy the VHS because they were a few bucks cheaper. And then a few years later, I was like, oh, I should have just bought the DVDs. And I was mad I had the VHS, but now I'm happy I actually bought the VHS copies. So yeah, that's a funny movie right there. Super Cop, amazing. Rush Hour. Now, now, one of the first things I did when I got a license when I was 16 years old, I drove to Walmart and I bought this. Uh, it was only like $4 or so at Walmart, brand new. Classics right here. This is good. Uh, I've read some of the books and they're pretty good. And I like this too, uh, this like BBC TV show adaptation. Classic 80s movie right here. Good. Here's some, uh, you know, a rare uh, Tom Green tape. That's pretty cool. What's it called? Raw Meat and Rare Treats. Yeah. From when he was on Public Access, I think. I got this Teen Spirit, a tribute to Kurt Cobain. This is just like interviewing people who were a fan of Kurt Cobain. It's not the greatest thing ever. I think that I got this free, like, from a mail away. Uh, it's okay. There's no Nirvana music in this or anything. And very little footage of Kurt Cobain. Winners Take All. This is an underrated motocross movie. Movies like Rad have a huge cult following. Rad is about BMX and like thrashing is about skateboarding. Those movies have a huge cult following. I feel no one really talks about this one, uh, but it is pretty good for what it is and worth watching. These are okay as well. Nothing too groundbreaking there. Missing in action too. This is slightly underrated. A lot of people don't think this is very good, but I think it's all right. Memoirs of an Invisible Man. That darn punk. Uh, members of the punk group The Vandals. I was a big fan of them. They put out this movie. I've only watched this once, so I'm assuming I didn't like it very much. I don't really remember too much about it. These Elvira ones. Uh, now, people seem to talk about this one from time to time, uh, and it's uh, you know considered pretty good. I don't really hear people talk about this one. And this is good, too. I recommend watching Elvira's Haunted Hills. Yeah. And this one, Reuben and Ed. It came in just a blank sleeve. And I'm pretty sure the director of this movie sold it to me on eBay. So because this isn't on DVD, it was hard to find. And I'm pretty sure the director was just making his own copies of this. I've been talking for a long time. I'm going to take a break. This is going to be a two-part video. I do appreciate you watching. So, uh, you know, like and subscribe. And uh, you'll see the next one. Maybe next week. Maybe earlier than that. I'm not exactly sure. But yeah, like and subscribe. And I didn't show all the good ones up top. There's still uh, plenty of good stuff to go through. So I appreciate you watching. Okay, see you next time.